you guys in so long, I don't know how anymore. I just listened to you talking about all the fun you were having. Well, you gotta you gotta tell us about your uh, your smoke jumpers couple of weeks. Oh God, smoke jumpers. Uh, what could've else been. we got? We could have been. We could. All right. So this is episode two hundred and twenty-two of We Were Gamers, a podcast where we sometimes have three hosts and sometimes only two. Trace Dose. This week we'll find out how many hosts we have after I introduce them. Hello, Michael. Hey, JJ. How you doing? And hello, <laughs> Andy. Welcome back to the podcast. I really feel like we got a sprite. sprite ooh. One sentence in. <laughs> Welcome back to civilization. Spice and spruce both came out of my mouth at the same time. Spruce is a type of tree. I've been living in trees. Anyway, uh... I, your intro was so good. I was gonna say in post we got to put in like some rocky entrance music or something. Hey, let's not oversell it here. I mean, I was gonna say Rocky. <laughs> Rocky didn't quite tumble back down those stairs, did he? <laughs> <laughs> he made it in the ring. That's that's for sure. I don't know how how good it looked once he was in there, but you know. Oh boy! Hi guys, welcome back. Man. Hey, how's it? How's it going, man? <laughs> Uh, do you want to hear a story? We love stories on this podcast. Do you want to hear a story that's a metaphor for 2020? No. No. <laughs> it involves fire <laughs> and poop. Oh, no. <laughs> I, uh, I was in the woods for many a day trying to escape modern life. In fact... For many of those days, I did not use an electronic device except for my digital camera. Uh, so I have not played much Final Fantasy XII, by the way. Shocker. I know, right? Well, it's all, we were gone for a while. And so it was kind of all about not taking too much stuff. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah, get off the grid. Leave your things behind as much as you can. Take a book, enjoy nature sit in a stream that kind of thing and uh our first week went relatively well and as we left the there was a lightning storm the night of our last night at, at this first campground that we were at and i thought to myself hmm lightning's not very good right now there hasn't been much rain uh come to find out the next day that basically all campgrounds in the northern part of the state were closed because of massive and ongoing wildfires and uh we couldn't we couldn't return to the place we were because they had been evacuated and the place we were going was going to be evacuated and the air quality at most of the other places was so bad you probably shouldn't be there and uh, we spent a few days trying to figure out what to do and we finally found a place with good air quality. We could take the kids to the beach. There was almost no one there because it was kind of a secluded spot. So it was pretty safe to stay socially distant from people. All right. We're turning this thing around. Step on to the beach. Immediately nailed by a flock of pelicans. Oh, no. <laughs> Were they those aggressive ones? Uh, I don't know if they were aggressive. All they did was but, fly but above us had, and aggressively destroy everything that we had with us with their poop. Oh, okay. It wasn't like they were attacking you, trying to steal the stuff out of your hands and stuff, though, because I've seen birds that do that. No, no. We were just covered in feces. Immediately. Cool. So that was fun. Perhaps there was a reason why no one went there. <laughs> In some countries, that's considered good luck. Really? Which countries, Michael? Uh, Italy. If you get pooped on by a seagull? I don't know if it's a seagull specifically, but I'm pretty sure pelicans. a bird in general. Interesting. Hmm. Anyway, that wraps up 2020 in a nutshell. I think. Does it? <laughs> 
<laughs> just, I don't know. just when you think things might turn around, we could turn it. We could turn. We could turn this thing around, but no, no, we'll just get pooped on instead. That's man. It's like a real deep, <laughs> deep metaphor for. <laughs> Hey, you know, I listened to you guys while you were gone, and you got me all thinking about it because of the football discussion you were having and how things were going with that. And I was like, you know what? This trip was a metaphor. You can't escape uh, it no matter how hard you try. While we're talking <laughs> about things you can't escape and things we talked about already on the podcast, Andrew, do you want to chime in about the ongoing legal slap fight between Apple and Epic Games and Google and Epic Games? Uh, I saw today that they're trying to get restraining orders on each other. This is something that people do when they're engaged in lawsuits, I guess. I don't, I don't know. even know. What does that mean for a company? How do you get a restraining order against another company? I mean, Search Apple me. said they were going to pull all of Epic's licenses to develop stuff for iOS. So I imagine they would like to keep developing for iOS. So they told them, nah, judge, block it. That seems like a thing you would get a restraining order for. I see. Okay. That's a weird concept to me. Because I was you, more interested in your take on the whole thing, because I don't really think following the individual developments of the legal case is oh, okay. important or so, interesting for literally anyone. So one <laughs> of the most who cares? Sure, sure, sure. One of the most uh, intriguing arguments that I would have to delve deeper into or decide that I'm not scholarly enough to understand is the argument about markets and healthy markets and all that sorts of stuff. Mm -hmm. Um. And it seems to conflate the idea that having a digital storefront is essentially creating a market. I mean, are goods being exchanged on there? Yes. So then is it not a marketplace? That's the definition of a marketplace. <laughs> but if I go to any grocery store in my surrounding vicinity, a can of tomatoes is 99 cents. Yes, that's the sign of a healthy marketplace. Okay. Where there's competition. No, 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 but prices down. no. So, so one of the arguments I saw for this was that there's not a healthy marketplace. If you, if you, if you ascribe to the idea, which I'm not sure that I do, because I see it a little bit differently than than these people. But I, I have to admit that I have not researched it a ton. I only came back into, you know, the the world a week ago and found out they were all suing each other. So from you, actually, <laughs> uh. If you see it the way that they were saying in these scholarly articles or whatever, which was, you know, these guys have created a, a unhealthy singular market where, you know, everyone's paid the same fees, everyone makes the same amount of money, all that kind of stuff. I would argue that that is no different, honestly, than like the grocery store chains, because everyone who makes tomatoes gets paid the same amount to give the canned tomatoes to any grocery store chain in the local vicinity. So I see them more as having created stores than marketplaces. And that, that the argument that like a healthy marketplace requires exorbitant changes in price between people and competition to the bottom isn't necessarily true i i happen to i be think the the thing that uh so i i think i agree with kind of the point you're getting at here okay related to the like hey marketplace and is this a marketplace or not and i think that's like the central question right yeah of the entire case right and, yeah absolutely yeah. but the thing that they're also talking about is Apple has these rules such that you are not allowed to, and Google has the same rules and Steam and, and it, all these kinds of online marketplaces have similar kinds of rules. The PlayStation store, the Xbox store all have these kinds of rules, right? Mm -hmm. Where, uh, it, and I only know because the only article I read about this was talking about the Apple one, but it was Apple has these rules, right? And you have to follow them. You know what they are when you sign up because they're all written there. Right. Mm -hmm. And the, the thing that Epic wants to do, it sounds like, and the thing that they did that they went around was not the paying their fees to be on the shelf side of the market. They went around the transactions that happen after the initial transaction mm -hmm. market, which is also something Apple has a corner on because you're never allowed to go through any other way of making payments except through Apple. Even though there are competing services which could, in theory, also process payments 
you must use Apple's because you're on Apple's store. So this would and be they, like Google uses a similar one, right? And Steam has one as well. You know? This would be like if you took, uh, you know, those Square devices. If you if you grabbed the Square hardware and then you hacked it, and so you didn't have to pay the Square fee, you know what I mean? Essentially, uh, so is what they're trying to do is they're like, uh, fee, like th- that's different though, right? You own a piece of hardware from Square, you're paying them to let you, you know, well, to have them, them do, do these transactions. Yeah. You're not, uh, you've already paid Apple to be on their store. Right, sure. you, you can't be on the store. You pay them yearly, even to have a developer account. Mm-hmm. You can't like get there without that payment. They're taking then additional money on every transaction subsequent to that, right? And there's yeah. no choice of you, you can't choose to use Square or take cash. You must use Apple's version of the payment thing. Yeah, that yeah. was the that was well, the analogy so I, I ran, was going to make. It's like giving cash. Let's say I ran like a farmers market, right? I, if I told people before they came to my farmers market that they you know had to pay me for a table and also i took one percent of all their transactions cash credit card or whatever they would know that in advance and and that goes back stemming from the article that i believe uh, you linked or something that i read that says well if google and apple both do this then it's not a healthy marketplace because one of them should be competing against the other and that would mean that they would drop these fees and i just don't see it being that way right they both Uh, run their store the same way then you know and and one of the things that reflects the marketplace is the things being sold there not just the fees associated with it and and i think those types of things are healthy enough and they're honestly sometimes more healthy than what i see in like common goods markets i was just about to say earlier we x we and this is a story for probably three or four weeks from now when it actually becomes a thing but we're looking at cars. I can't tell you how many cars I just looked at with the same exact features that cost within a thousand dollars of each other. Yeah. You know what I mean? And so like, this is just the way that markets are. So, but there's a, there is also a, you know, with, with cars and with, uh, you know, other physical things, there is a, you can just go buy that from someone else, right? If I want to get something on this phone, there's no alternative. I have to get it this way. Yeah. Versus, which I think the argument then comes around if you talk about like PC, right? Well, there are different ways to get the same thing. There are multiple different storefronts that you can go to buy from. You can go to multiple different people and then buy what is you know essentially the same car. And yeah, they're priced very similarly, right? Because that's how much the market will pay for these things. Or how much they are, you know, forcing them to charge through various schemes, right? There's there's no choice here, though, right? You have 15 dealers you could drive to in a hundred mile radius. You have one app store ever, always on every phone. Yeah, I. So it's a. I think I don't necessarily it, see your points are totally right. There. I think, and it is a. Uh, it is an it is a question of not whether the monopoly is allowed, right? Because the monopoly already exists. You can't just like all of a sudden say Google, you can sell on Apple's phones too now. Like that's not how antitrust but, law even but that's works. The, that's the thing, right? It's not a monopoly. Google creates a comparable tiered set of the same services: phone, app, etc. Uh, but I'm saying that it is a monopoly. If you own this phone, there's only you have to buy from the company store. There's only one store. There's no other store. If you want to buy Google stuff, you have to get a different phone, go to a different store, and then there's a monopoly there. And the point isn't whether the monopoly exists or not. It exists. It's not a question. The question is whether they're using that monopoly power anti-competitively or not. And I don't know the answer to that. I don't know how the, that stuff is defined. And whether that's true or not, It's I have no idea. And I think kind of the end of the day, the answer is whoever wins, the consumer loses. <laughs> so it's kind of like... <laughs> I don't know, man. I, I was just curious because you're you're more into the that those ecosystems, I think, than I am in some cases. So yeah, as far as I've understood, monopoly power in the tech space, it kind of most most of those laws stem back to what happened to to Microsoft when they were ruled against, and yeah, and a the lot of late nineties. Yeah, and almost all companies have now very powerful legal departments that keep them very very clearly defined away from 
the monopoly that was ruled against there. And uh, that's why you have three conglomerate companies, right? Like that, that have swallowed up and, and created these ecosystems, but they all tend to compete and roughly, uh, like you said, non, mm, what was the, it competitive? The word is anti-competitive, uh, right? Anti-competitive. Yeah. You cannot behave anti-competitively. Right. I guess they've, it just, they've it, all created a thing. And so Epic, Epic seems to try to be waging a, a war that no one was fighting. Yeah, I think that's that's a fair way to put it. it it's certainly a uh, an issue no one asked for anyone to solve. Well, I'm sure people would be happy if the structures and the fees and all that stuff ended up changing. But I, I don't know that anyone was like, yes, please go sue Apple for this for us, please. I would so, love to uh, know what your guys... Also, thought. like, why did they need to, like, then tell... Hey kids, Apple's taking away your Fortnite. Get mad at them. Like, how is that going to help your court case? Thing I don't, that that's always to happens. With it. Remember when TV? Oh, your channel's gonna shut off because your people won't pay more money. Yep, it's the same thing. The difference is that like is a peer pressure tactic to get them to negotiate to like I mean, get a deal here. Arguably, there's no, arguably, there's those, no deal here. I mean, but arguably, <laughs> those are more in the right as i have no other tv provider uh, they, right like i literally have they have wait, uh, those things uh, i can go I get mean, a different phone i can't go get a different cable company i mean that's a it depends on how you want to define a market right i think the uh and so like it all just comes down to how you define it right is the market phones as a whole or is the market only people who own iphones is the market only people who own Android phones? Is the market only people who have Which PCs? is why I think that they they and so they like it lose just, just on the basis of having called the two of those companies a market. It just it just depends how you draw the line, and it, depending on where you draw the line, the answer becomes different, right? Yeah. So anyway, I was just curious. Know, how do you guys feel about uh, Tesla suing Rivian over copyright infringement? I'm sorry, what now? Tesla. Uh, I don't believe in copyright infringement in nearly all cases, so I think that uh, Tesla should lose, Tesla, and everyone suing over copyright infringement should lose. Tesla, who has publicly published all their patents, is suing another company for copyright infringement. Yeah, that seems a stretch. Uh, I, I, I haven't read more uh, like this other issue. I haven't. I want to be more informed about it. Because it seems ridiculous, but it might not be. You never know. Like patent law, copyright law is full of insane things and needs to be replaced. Yeah. It's well, because it's got a bunch works. of laws in the books from the 1800s still. Yeah. Just like patent law. Yeah. It's yeah. terrible. All right. Enough court courtroom drama. Who doesn't love it? Right, guys? Usually courtrooms are in session over food crimes over here. Yeah. I, uh, I have not been able to dredge up any crimes against oh, the food. Oh, speaking so. speaking of of food crimes. Uh oh. So have oh. you guys? Have you guys? Uh, Andy, you you probably would have been more likely to hear about this than JJ. The OC Fair, um, one of the best and worst for you food experiences every year, it's has decided not, not that they best, are just worse. Uh, they have decided that they are doing a drive through food experience this year oh no <laughs> yeah fair, uh, to be clear fair food is the same everywhere so it's not any different down here it's just as bad it's slash good and all the same companies go to all these fairs right yeah exactly yeah, yeah sure they do except most of those companies aren't going to this Wait, so what? there are so they're they're holding this event and there are five vendors. <laughs> okay. okay. I mean, I'll, I'll give you the rundown. There was a Hawaiian chicken bowl place. Yum. Hot dog on a stick. Uh, Dippin' Dots. No. Kathy's Cookies. And a funnel cake stand. Nah, I'm good. I don't need to. This isn't for me or anyone. What is the Hawaiian bowl place? Uh, it's the place where you can get um, like Hawaiian chicken and rice in half a pineapple. Is it? Okay, so it's not one of yeah. the like brand name places. Got it. Okay, yeah, I can. But see like, that. yeah, 
it, that's not what you go to fair food for, right? If you're going to fair food, you want fried Oreos. You want burgers with donuts for buns. You want really stupid stunt food. And this no. is not that, right? Yeah. My it, just, it feels like... You want a burrito like filled with macaroni and cheese and hot Cheetos or something. Yeah. Oh, God. It feels like Deep someone fried. had this idea to, hey, let's do a fair drive through And then they got too far down the down the pipe with the idea and then they realized yeah none of the vendors are going to show up but they couldn't put the brakes on at that that point yeah that's too bad because that is a like not terrible idea of like have a drive through area and like you know 10 things that you could order from and then just like drive up to the window to pick up your order yeah exactly but yeah hmm fair food is a is a food crime generally but, you know, sometimes crimes are necessary, you know, infrequently. I think, I think there's a few fair foods that are okay and that are timeless enough, like the turkey leg. Yeah. But yep. like, it would a be classic. a food crime if you did something to the turkey leg. Deep fry it. Nope. Food crime. Bro. Bro. How can anything be worse if you deep fry it? That's how that's what the fair is for. <laughs> deep fry everything. Yes. <laughs> I'm not telling you I want to eat this turkey leg, but if it was given to me or if it was like, you know, only twelve dollars, I would have it. Only <laughs> twelve dollars. <laughs> it's funny because it's true. That's how much they cost. <laughs> yeah. I think the Disneyland ones are more than that now. Michael would remember. Oh, I'm sure. Right, I'm you're paying sure that are. Disney tax. You're paying that Disney tax. Oh, man, you don't get yeah. the Disney tax at the fair. Can you imagine what the Disney tax is going to be when there's only like a third of the people in the park? Well, they're also paying fewer employees, so. Okay. $19.99 plus $19.99. <laughs> yep. All right. I, uh, you know, we talked about it the last couple weeks. Um, the GDQ has ended finally. Uh, not that it was the finally. I make it sound like it's bad that it ended. It was good. And there were a lot of great runs. I don't know if you guys picked up any. I know Michael and I talked last time and we saw some of the like very early ones that were cool. Andrew, I'm guessing you probably didn't. I made pick time up too for one here. run. Oh, yeah, baby. Are we going to talk about it? Could Can you we, hold on? Should we enjoy it, it first and then argue after, or argue first and then enjoy it after? What is there to argue about? It was great. We had a difference of opinion about the time leading up to that run. Well, I mean, some of that is you should know better. They milked oh, it. Of course, they're going to milk it. They milk it There's every time. There's a schedule, Bro, and you the can't schedule be means an nothing. hour late on a digital platform, like. I feel like, okay, so to to run this down, there was a run we were all going to watch together. We'll get to it in a second. It was supposed to be on at 9.07. It didn't start until 10 something, I think. Uh, In the meantime, they had clearly planned to do an interview and also a whole bunch of pushing of stuff, which I feel like when they do this stuff in person, they have a little bit more of a fire under their butt because people are there getting them to move along. They did not have the fire is what I'm saying. I mean, the people in the chat were pretty mad about it, but that's not like the people in the chat are mad all the time. So that doesn't was really egregious. I don't, I felt like it was just like every other well, well, ugh, well publicized famous run. They always spend 20 minutes beforehand doing some garbage telling you about prizes or telling you about cool things you can donate for or interviewing some person you don't care about or whatever so it's like it's no different to me it was not 20 minutes though wasn't it was i mean i was sitting there the entire time it was not an hour it was a half hour the entire run was was like an hour once it started so i had people that i tried to get to watch it and they all bailed because it took so long. Moving on. I'm sorry you had a bad experience. The run itself was awesome. It was ridiculous. And I watched the whole thing just like I did last time. And I was amazed the entire time. Yeah. He's, yeah. He, he's ridiculous. Okay, get, what are we talking about? 
We're talking about pump it up exclamation point. Happy feats. Happy feats. Yes. And uh, we watched it all here as well. Uh, we had it on the entire time. And we just said, you just, at some point, you just become transfixed and you're like, can humans move this fast? For an hour? <laughs> For an hour? And yeah. To be fair, he was pushing the limits of his endurance at the end. You could tell. He, oh, by, yeah. yeah, he was done by the end of it. He was he was gassed with probably 20 minutes to go. And you could tell he was like fighting through it for the for the good of the stream. So What's good crazy. on him, man. Yeah. What's crazy about that? I've watched him play Pump It Up on his free time. Yeah, he but, streams it all the time, apparently. He doesn't stream Pump It Up all the time because, um, like you said, when he does... When he does these marathon runs or when he does a night where he's really trying to get like a triple S on a song or something like that. And he goes for an hour or two hours, his body for like a day or two is just like, you cannot do pump it up again. I, I, I believe that. Yeah. Uh, it's like a, like an athlete, you know, you perform at the top of the game. Eventually like you sure. can't be peak running form every day of the week. It's um, only once, you know? Yeah. He's been at it for over a decade, I know, and at the top of the charts, no pun intended, for over a decade. I'm pretty sure his body is that is in the shape that an athlete, like a basketball player or baseball player's body is, where it's just like, this has been hard for 10 years, you know? So it's amazing to watch. Yeah. That. Oh. People absolutely should go check it out. It is so cool. Just like... He he glides across those pads at some points, not like sliding, but like his feet are moving discreetly while sliding from left to right. It's it's really impressive. He looks there are times when it looks like he's not even lifting his feet off the pads. He he has said uh, that he has the perfect size feet for tapping two places at once. Uh it, you know how there's the like top corner and bottom corner. He can yeah. get his toe and his heel to tap those two things at one time. Because he's not, it's not just using his foot, you know, for folks that don't understand, this is like a, one of those um, dance, yeah. dance revolution, yeah. DDR type games, um, you know, some minor twists, but the, you know, he doesn't just put his foot on the arrow. He puts his like his toe and then the back of his heel on a different arrow, whether that's the center or the bottom corner or whatever. Yeah. Yep. It was funny. We were watching live and one of the people watching with me who actually stuck it out, uh, was like, well, okay, so they must do this, you know, knowing how hard some of these moves are. They can't like, they can't make him touch both corners like the opposite corners of both pads at the same time and i was like want to bet and sure enough within within 30 seconds there he was using the thing to stretch his legs across both pads to the opposite corners yeah and then there was the one moment where he actually he like hunched down and used his hands to hit some of the buttons yeah because he had to hold two other lines and then tap some other stuff at the same time which is nuts yep it's it's just unbelievable watching that thing. It, and you're like, not just is it a matter of memorization, right? It also requires like rhythm and speed <laughs> because you can't just be like, you can't just tap the letters out as fast as you can either. There's beats and stuff you have to hit to oh, keep them, right? And there's there's remix songs where the beats change tempo and they change yeah, like, tempo at random almost. And there's like a bass yeah. drop in the middle of this random riff and then all of a sudden, ah, different <laughs> set of things, right? Yep. Yeah, it, crazy. I, easily the best run of the marathon that I saw. Did you guys see any other good ones, Michael? Or I guess Andrew, I don't know if you tuned into other ones. Uh, I caught some of Mario Kart 8 was the only other one I caught. And that was fun to hear about like all the 250cc tricks. I watched uh, some of that Mario Kart 8 showcase as well. Um, Same here. It was, they're very fast gotta go fast it's, yeah there's stuff there's stuff you can do in the 250 that you can't in any of the other speeds yeah you can it's pretty impressive it's a lot of jumping over things because you just have so much loft yep yeah, and they are correct that those games were built for like 200 or whatever and then they added the 250 later and it broke a bunch of stuff about a lot of the tracks like in some cases going over the grass is faster than using the shortcuts because like the 250 mode is so much more ridiculous um, yep but that's just in like, I know that from just playing it, not because like I'm good. 
these people are on the next level beyond that. They're just like flying in a lot of cases. It was interesting uh, to see their cart selection in that game because I've stared at, there's a chart. Somebody made a chart online and it's mm-hmm. literally like, okay, take this as your base um, cart stats. And then if you add this glider, subtract 0.25, this blah, 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 blah. And you can build an exact stat map of all the parts for your car and your rider and all that that you've chosen. Mm -hmm. And to me, it was kind of like almost as if, okay, well, like this is just so you can figure out what style you like. Okay. Now that I know what style I like, I can tune that in and make it a little better by picking a better glider or something. But when I saw, (laughs) when I saw the character and the motorcycle and the glider, I was like, this is not at all where I thought the stats should be. Like I looked it up again. <laughs> it's like, okay. it's also that they, they said they're optimizing like for acceleration, I think yeah. above everything. Right. right? And mm-hmm. so it's like, who cares what the top speed is because two two fifty is so good or whatever. You can just like get whatever we want, like a heavy character plus the max of acceleration we can get or something like yeah. that. So really interesting. That whole thing. Uh, I wanted to shout out the Bloodstained Zangetsu run, if people didn't see that. I was just going to bring that one up. Yeah, I caught that one uh, after the fact, but I went back yeah. and watched the replay, and it's it is, it's nutty. And he played with a hitbox, which for those uh, who don't know what that is, that's a it's a f- controller that's typically associated with fighting games like Smash and, and Street Fighter and those kinds of games. Um. But it essentially allows you to input all the directions as buttons instead of a stick or a D-pad. And so you can do crazy things like press up and down at the same time. Which makes those often illegal for like fighting tournaments and stuff, right? Uh, They're legal in a lot of tournaments because they can be like modified and set to certain ways to like disallow things that are, you know, that break the game, right? Oh, okay. But yes, there are some cases where they are banned because they allow you to do stuff that is just not the game does not like (laughs) or give you like give you advantages that should be impossible. Right. Because you can block all the time while walking forward or something like that. Right. Yep. Um, However, Zangetsu uses fighting game type motions, essentially. (laughs) Uh, And so this dude is like flying around the game as Zangetsu and just destroying bosses with these special moves that like. I am lucky if I can pull off without getting destroyed by the boss in two hits. <laughs> yeah. Well, the, I mean, I think the thing that he used to to best effect in the whole run was he basically used it to chain together sliding mm-hmm. so that he could move. He could seamlessly go from one slide into another and move around the map that way. Mm hmm. That's cool. It, yeah. Very, very cool. So, very fun. I think that's uh, a lot of cool stuff there. People should go check out the I'm amazed for those. that they were able to hit 2 million just doing this online. I So, I tuned in near the beginning of the last game, and they were at like 1.8, and then I saw the close was 2.3 something. So, they raised a lot of money during that last Pokemon run. They also yeah. do things well, like it was added. It was five and a half hours. Oh, that's fair. That's fair, I guess. I didn't... Yeah, Pokemon games take forever. They so. also have to add in all the... Um, all the... the Sorry, the bits and the subscriptions, too. So that takes a little bit oh, of time. To yeah, I suppose that's calculate. true. Yeah, that, that money comes in a little bit later, I imagine, too. Yeah. So that was cool. There was some actual, like, new games and trailers and stuff that got announced this weekend. Y'all catch any of the DC Fan Dome, which is one of the dumbest names for a thing I've ever heard? Not as dumb as the system that they used for that raffle. <laughs> Michael, tell us oh what we're talking about. So, uh, DC decided that they were going to have a contest during Fan Dome for an exclusive um, Lego minifigure. Um, and there was a there was a grand prize as part of it too, which was a big prize package. But for the most part, they were they were raffling off fourteen hundred, fifteen hundred of these uh, Wonder Woman exclusive minifigures. 
But instead of having you just put your name down and them doing a drawing, instead, they decided that they were going to break the 24 hours up into half hour windows, distribute the 1500 minifigs across these 48 windows, and then have you enter during each window for a separate drawing. And you could enter each one up to 10 times. Ooh. I yeah. definitely, I definitely throughout the day, as I thought of it, went to that website and just like clicked my name into those fields again. Yep. Three yeah, or four I, times. I did it during day. a bunch, during a bunch of the windows, uh, figuring that, you know, our, our best bets out here was to wait till the very end of the day, like 11, 12 o'clock. Because you you had to be a U.S. resident to be eligible to win. Yeah, I uh, real silly system. Comic Con has come up with dumb systems to give these Lego minifigures away before, but this one, was yeah, real. Just, just real let nutty. me tap. Let me tap on a tablet and let me know immediately. Or like, if you want to do this different giveaway things, like don't just have it be the same web page that you refresh at different times of day arbitrarily, like. Say, like, giveaway one starts here, giveaway two starts here, or whatever. Like, they didn't even do that. It's just like, I don't know, keep keep hammering this form, I guess. Whatever. <laughs> I think it was... Uh, all right. I was... Did did you guys catch any of the stuff from the, the, the fandom itself, the announcements or trailers and all this other stuff? No, I was happily driving during the fandom. So do we, JJ, do we want to start at the bottom of the hill and make yeah, our way up? Or do we <laughs> no, no, let's, let's start at the bottom of the hill. Uh, Robert Pattinson's The Batman, I think is how I'm going to refer to this movie. Yeah. <laughs> so I'll, I'll say the good stuff up front. I like the rest of the casting. I didn't even get far enough into the trailer to see who else was in it. <laughs> Sorry. It was not the most gripping thing, was it? DC now has a style I've discovered and the style is cover of some song. You're supposed to know what it is, but played in like a sad way or something. Mm, that's kind of everything. Even the new Top Gun movie has that. Hey, right, that's fair. I don't like this. <laughs> I'm just <laughs> going to say, say I don't like it. <laughs> not, I didn't, no judgment on the trend. Just saying. Uh, fair, fair. Um, this movie just looks weird. I don't think I, it, it is a, it appears to be some kind of like back to earth Batman origin story thing or something. So it's not, it's not supposed to be an origin story. It's supposed to be like two years into him being the Batman. Um, but it is supposed to be more of a detective story than a straight action movie. Batman, I, the world's I, greatest detective, as which opposed I to Batman like the superhero. As, as an idea, because it's, you know, how many times have we seen the origin story told in a movie? Um, almost, I like that they're at reboot, least... Right? right. I like that they're at least trying to do something different as a starting point. Yeah, and I don't think that, like, Batman as the, the world's greatest detective is a bad premise. He is that in the comics. There are plenty of great comic book um, storylines where he does detective stuff and kind of doesn't really punch bad guys really too much. So I don't know. Uh, I just so, so many, it, it's hard to tell from one of these trailers, I suppose, but one of the reasons it, it might be hard to tell is uh, this might be pre COVID footage and they may be stalled. They are not. You're right. They're not done filming. Okay. I guess that makes me feel better. I don't know I don't what know. it means. I'm just saying I, it's uh, possible it is, why it, the trailer doesn't come together as light as you might like. I guess I'm just look at the aesthetic of the whole thing is like everything is dark and it's raining all the time and Batman is brooding because that's what Batman does. Uh, I don't know, man. <laughs> I don't know what they're doing with this movie. <laughs> I, yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know that I object to him as that guy. I just, maybe I just don't like the costume. Maybe that's what it is. I don't know. 
Mm. Yeah. I was, I'll, I will I will withhold the majority of judgment until they, until at least they're done filming and can put together something yeah. more cohesive. Yeah, that's the I thing. Mean, you know, I think I absolutely get where you're coming from, JJ. Like, I, I don't see what it is. And because it's not... So you've got the news also that, like, Batfleck also still exists at the same time that this movie is coming out. And you've also had the Joker movie recently as well that is unrelated to all this other stuff. So like, what is this compared to those things is not answered by this. Right. And that's where I think we're left with like, okay, well shrug until someone tells me what I'm, what I'm supposed to be aware of here. Yeah. Yeah. I, I yeah, that's, that must be it. Cause like, I just, I'm willing to hear more again, if you want to show me something else, but this was not, I'm not all in on this movie after this. Uh, and speaking of movies where they also didn't show you much, there was a, hey guys, did you like that Suicide Squad movie? I d- in fact did not. Shocker. <laughs> still, still haven't found the time to watch it. Oh, huh. You're not missing Surprise. Much. Yeah, yeah I, you can, nah. There's like one good scene. <laughs> I wonder Maybe a couple if you good could scenes. take like all the dead shot stuff out of there. And make it kind of like the first third of a standalone Deadshot movie, it might be good. Yeah. Hmm. There, there was like, I don't know, a couple of the scenes with Harley Quinn were good, but none of the scenes with the Joker were good. So I don't know how you disentangle that problem. Anyway, uh, they're making a new Suicide Squad movie. Um, Amanda Waller is back. I don't, or sorry, Viola Davis. Viola Davis as them. Amanda yeah, Waller. Amanda Waller. Uh, is back. I guess they must have backed up the dump truck of cash to her house. <laughs> They're like, please come back. Um, the only thing I saw about this is that it is set in the 1970s Vietnam. Okay. Okay. Because that's when not was, in the trailer. When uh, was the original one set? Right. Not during Vietnam. <laughs> not during. Okay. That's good news because that means we probably don't have the Joker. I hope that's true. Yeah. Um, so I don't know, man. (laughs) Probably, I said. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, moving on to more video game related news. There were video game announcements at this thing. Yeah. Uh, you know, moving from, again, the bottom to the top. I mean, I guess there were only two. Um, Suicide Squad, colon, kill the Justice League. Okay. Starring everyone's favorite Suicide Squad characters, Harley Quinn, Captain Boomerang, yeah, uh huh, Man Shark, cool, Deadshot, right. yeah, yeah, gotta have Deadshot, and there was another guy, Captain Cold, no, like, anyway, two captains, I guess. You can go watch the you can go watch the trailer. Uh, there's literally no gameplay in it whatsoever. It's a cinematic trailer. Who knows what this game even is? Oh. <laughs> Sounds like a lot of C-listers to me. Uh, Kevin Boomerang is not really a C-lister. He's been around. He's a, he's a steady Flash and uh, DCU villain. Okay. He is a C-list video game Man, character. Man no, Shark. no one has ever heard of him. He's not been in anything. Man Shark might not be an A-list <laughs> Man Shark is actually in the Harley Quinn TV show, which is actually pretty decent. So, I surprisingly, as a recurring character, hmm. um, but he doesn't look like this, so I don't know. <laughs> uh, remember that? What was that show? This is made. Shark? What was that show with the sharks? The animated one. Uh, you're talking about sewer sharks? I think that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, was that good? I think you were. That was the one where they skated a lot. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, it was during that radical phase of cartoons. Where they in the had 90s. like, it's not sewer sharks. Sewer sharks, yeah, like but a horror th- movie. What what was they called? No, 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 no. I think it's sewer sharks. <laughs> and then they like they 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 like swim under the land. Like their fin pokes out through the concrete as they go along. Oh man, that's right. They did, didn't they? Street sharks. Street sharks. Street sharks. Yeah, there we go. 
you guys are right. Man, it's how many people were screaming at us street shows. <laughs> Apologies. Not many because that cartoon is old. Didn't one of them have like a hockey stick and the other one drove a Harley or something? Sounds right. Mm-hmm. They're like trying to be the Ninja Turtles, but sharks. And then their enemies were like dinosaurs. Yeah, okay. I'm pretty sure. I'm remembering way too much of this now. Uh, I want to point out that this uh, this game is coming from the people what did done make the Batman Arkham games previously. Arkham Asylum, quite, Arkham quite popular. City, and Arkham Knight. Yeah, so, those those are popular. Yeah, it sold very well and were generally pretty good games. So, who knows? Uh, the uh, that's 2022, I think, for Suicide Squad colon Kill the Justice League because the the name is so long. I have to say it every time. <laughs> Why do you make your name this long? It's so long. Uh, and coming out, I think next year is the other announcement, which was Gotham Knights, and that's K N I G H T S for folks who can't, uh, you know, read the thing. Uh, and this is Knights being the night, the Gotham Knights generally being the sidekicks of Batman. This, uh, this looks like a bat family game. Yep. Bat family is a good way to put it, but sometimes Gotham Knights includes people like, um, what's his name? Red, red, something red, hood. red hood. No, not red hood. Uh, no, not red Robin. He wears a mask. About he's to say, the, might be Red Hood. He's isn't he the one who's in the gameplay trailer? I was gonna say Red Hood it's and Red, Hood. Red Robin are, yeah. are both in this game. Okay, yeah. so Red Hood for a while, not Batman Family, even though I think currently is Batman Family. I don't know. He goes all over the place, but generally the heroes and anti-heroes surrounding Batman. So this Gotham is Knights. a uh it appears to be a co-op game where they they say you can play both single and multiplayer co-op how many players all the time two two oh just two yes okay so it's not going to be like one of those x-men games from i think they have that the marvel the The marvel Marvel games yeah i mean this looks like a third person character action game like the batman arkham games have looked oh okay also developed by those people no different team Mm. Oh, uh, but it looks like the combat is relatively similar, and the you know there's a lot of like scaling cities using movement powers and stuff. <laughs> um, there are four different characters you can be. One is Robin, one is Red Hood, one is Batgirl, and one is Nightwing. Standard. Red Hood, not so yeah. standard, but good. I like it. Yeah. yeah. And they all have different things about them. You know, um, Robin apparently can do like some kind of weird teleport thing. And Batgirl has some kind of, I don't know, shooting from the sky thing. And I didn't see gameplay from Red Hood or uh, the other one. Red Hood generally has guns. So. Seems like a thing where you could have guns. There you go. Yeah. So uh, I don't know. This is interesting. Um that one looks the most like a game, given that there's gameplay out there you can watch. Yeah. Although, interestingly, the, the gameplay was all pre-alpha footage, but it still looked pretty polished. This is what video game companies do. Anytime yeah, they don't well, want yeah, you to trust right. that this is going to be how it looks, they write pre-alpha on it so that no one can complain that it got changed. <laughs> well, also also the fact that they get they get further down the line than you might consider an alpha in terms of development and then say, Oh no, it's still in the alpha phase. Yeah, of course. Right. Right. And then the beta is an almost released game. And of course, right. The numbers don't mean anything externally. Um, so anyway, I, I think it looks cool. There's like some concept of levels such that you can like, you know, it, it looks like you will be able to like the difficulties will change as you do these missions again with higher levels or something like this. Yeah, yeah, the the bosses get stronger and use different move sets if you're stronger. So interesting. I don't know. Um, those games are fun. Um, like those Batman style games have been good in the past. So I'm 
I'm interested in this. The characters look good. I don't know. Hey, if the if the co op is online, I'm I'm down. They have said the co op is online. So count me in. That's cool. I mean, it can't be as bad as the Halo co op, right, Andrew? Hey, the, <laughs> you know, is the Halo co op bad? Mm. So there you go. Yes, it, it's just it's janky though. It okay? Yes. And anything could be janky, especially depending on what you're running this on. They can't put the they can't put co-op as like the front label feature of the box and have it be that janky. <laughs> in we my opinion, played in a little while. When is ODST coming? When it's done, I don't know. Hmm. I, I have heard like end of whisperings summer, on the wind that yeah, like by the end of the year they want to have all of them out. So cool. I miss Halo. I haven't touched Halo in multiple weeks. All of this DC stuff made me reinstall Batman Arkham City and play through that again. So, Oh, wow. I didn't actually get all the way through it. but um, As of August 18th, ODST is beta testing on PC. There you go. Okay. So, more Halo coming soon to this podcast, I am sure. Because we like that game. Well, yeah. Yeah, that game was fun. We had a good time. Mm-hmm. A game that we're all having fun with, JJ. What? That has still not explained to me what a peanut does. <laughs> <laughs> yes. What does a peanut do? Blaseball's back. I missed talking about Blaseball while I was gone. Yeah, you, you were perfect. You went on, you took a siesta from the internet for two weeks while Blaseball took an extended siesta, and then the siesta ended and Blaseball's back. Everything's great. Back, Huzzah! Refreshed and ready to go. Uh, their servers seem to be doing well, and I love some of the chain things they've changed in here. Betting is much easier. The, uh, the webpage loads good. That's the thing I like. Yeah, but like placing bets, if you go to place a bet, Mm -hmm. and you like you could just click the team you want now you don't have to like select a drop down and then you can just hit max bet which is really good because i have the money to do max bet on everything yep this yeah. is a it's updated a, machine i it's nice i feel like the decrees this season are not as good as last season are you mad because there's one targeting your team our, our team sir <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Not wrong. Okay, no, I'm not because you pointed out to me that there was one last season that targeted the Millennials. Yeah. But there were two last season, and they actually ended up both winning, which was the Eat the Rich and... What was the other one? Uh, but the two I voted for last season were better than messing with the top team, who ended up not winning. Mm -hmm. but these <laughs> ones there's not really much out here better than messing with the top team so what are they this time around randomize the stats of oh yeah so we should say there's a new season right uh which means there's a whole new set of decrees and blessings you can vote on to try and get to the next season the games have started again the decrees are randomize the stats of one hitter and one pitcher on every team that's pretty good Okay, but, yeah. But not great because it could take your best hitter and turn them into a terrible hitter. It could also take your worst hitter and turn them into a monster. It's true. I wouldn't... Uh, it's it's not exciting, right? Because, it, well, I guess it is exciting if your team is terrible. It's it's exciting if you're not the Tigers. <laughs> if you don't have, like, a, amazing but, hitters already. But, but you go to the next one, which is Tame the Tigers five players from the tigers will be randomly distributed throughout the league so you might just get a better player from the tigers rather than or you might get one of the tigers bad players like <laughs> that's, that's the other yeah. thing it just says five players not five good players uh targeted shame the top four teams will be punished with targeted shame next season i think jj know how shame work he can explain it when so shamed, in, they start the next in, game with negative runs uh, so in baseball uh, unlike normal baseball, right, where in normal baseball, there would be, um, if you get into the last inning of a game and the team is winning, you don't have to play the end of the ninth inning, right? Mm-hmm. 
because there's no chance they can catch up. It's over, right? Yeah, right, right. Game over. In bl- in Blaze Ball, no, <laughs> you must you must play the game out. The beatings will continue until the outs are reached. Oh man! And uh, so shaming can happen right in that instance where the game then continues. And I think there are somehow ways for it to then continue on into extra innings despite being over. And so like essentially one team can run up the score a ton. And this happens like uh, the scores in baseball are already much higher than regular baseball anyway. Um, just because the stats on the, on the players are ridiculous. And the, and so, you know, like essentially if you run up the score a lot, uh, this targeted shame will mean you start with negative runs equal to the amount of shame you inflicted. Oh no! Hmm. Okay. Uh, or or does it mean the amount of shame inflicted on you? I don't know, right? Because mm-hmm. it's worded kind of ambiguously. So is it when you are the subject of shame or when you deal shame to other people? I don't know which way that works. Punish with targeted shame. When they're shamed, they'll start with the next game with negative runs equal to their shame. And so it sounds like when they're if the top team next season is beaten badly, they will start the next game in a bad. It's like the worst get worse, right? Like, yeah, the, the like yeah. the losers lose more. It gets worse. Yeah. The next one's home field advantage. Bottom four teams this season will gain home field advantage for next season. That's really good. That's yeah. That's actually if your not team a bad sucks. One. And sure. then it says they'll start each of their home games with one run, which is burying the lead there. Hmm. Getting a free run on every home game is and pretty all your good. games are home games. I think. Ho- I think the the. Uh, oh no, the no, home field. It doesn't say that, right? It's not a home. It's just game. when they, just, they when have. they have a home game, they get plus one run. So this is free runs. Okay. There's nothing bad here. It's only good. Okay. And then the fourth strike, which is the last one, Andrew. The bottom four teams from each season. So that would be 16 teams or possible repeats or, you know, so 16 or less. Well, or, or just four, right? Depends how they. The bottom four teams from each season will gain the fourth strike for the next season. It will take four strikes to strike out any of their batters. Wow. If you are a fan of a bad team, that is the one. That is an ungodly the powerful. <laughs> wow. Yeah. So that's really good. The others don't seem very good. So I have a bad feeling Tame the Tigers will be because everybody wants Jessica Telephone on their team. It, but the, yeah. Yeah. Also, you know, in metagaming this a little bit, right? If I was the people implementing this, you wouldn't want to give away the best player on the team. But if you give away like the entire supporting cast, right? Yeah, LeBron is over there look, by himself look, and he can't do anything. As yeah. an Angels fan, Mike Trout can't do it all by himself. Yes, exactly. We know yes. this now. So I think if you're looking for chaos, you vote for either alternate reality or the fourth strike because those are just going to cause havoc next season. Yeah, and I think everything else is kind of like the winners win more and the losers lose more. So they still haven't explained peanuts. And bro, I'm just going to go ahead and tell you nothing about this game is explained. <laughs> and then the, the thing that I saw at the end of last season, since I only started playing last season and when they started at the beginning of this season, blessings don't count even if you win the voting for them. It's random. So, Michael, get you this. are influencing the role. Yeah. Not whether you actually you aren't voting for the outcome. You're voting on the percent chance to win. But even then, it doesn't always. F- so, Michael okay there's like 16 of these and they go like this re-roll your team's three worst hitters re-roll your team's three worst pitchers improve your three random pitchers on your team by one star uh swap your best pitching hitter into your rotation sure sure you know stuff like that you select it and it seems like whoever just puts in the most votes would get it, but instead it's just random. So a lot of the ones from last season, no, hold on. It's not random. You're influencing the chance that your team gets picked, but there's also the chance that you lose the pick, right? It's like a lottery. Yeah. Oh, it's, just, wa- it's a weighted lottery. Yeah. You're putting in 10,000 votes for this and three votes for the other. Well, the three could win. It's yeah. just unlikely. Yeah. I didn't know that is what I was, I was surprised by it. Okay, so yeah, it, it is like, and some of those went kind of a crazy way. Like they certainly some, did. 
teams that had very low chances to win those won some of those blessings. So, yeah. Wow. You know, uh, but I don't know if you saw today uh, or, you know, since the season has begun, Andrew, there's a new weather. Yeah. Feedback. Feedback. And uh, this uh, this game takes place under all kinds of apocalyptic type weathers, uh, like solar eclipses, birds, and birds, <laughs> and peanuts. Uh, peanuts is another type of weather. It's a weather, but um, also you get peanuts, and you can have a squirrel eat them. So I don't get it. I think we'll talk about peanuts in a sec. Okay. <laughs> Feedback though uh, has shown to happen apparently. Uh, it is a thing that can happen in if the weather is the feedback. It can cause players to switch teams yeah. mid-game or after a game. Sorry, I don't know if it happens mid-game, but it could happen after a game. Okay. There has that- been one instance of this that I know of because I follow the, the baseball commissioner who is doing a great job on Twitter. He's doing a great job again. Yeah, he continues to do a great job. Um and they posted that feedback had occurred and two players from two teams had had switched. Huh. So uh that's what people voted for when they voted for the microphone, I guess. Oh boy. I I like that you can click on players and there's like more stuff now. They're gonna hold items and armor. Apparently. Yeah. Uh there are some people who have items and stuff, like the people with the um the blessings for like Gatling gun arm and stuff. Those pitchers have uh, like arm cannons and stuff listed there. Crazy. So it, it's cool that you can see all the players and you can kind of see their stats and all this I stuff. I really so like that it's described as a fan simulator and not a sports simulator. Yeah, right? Because you can't really affect anything here, really. <laughs> well, and, like you can't. The, the sport is almost a black box. Yeah. Yeah. And like, so you even just have trying to, to understand. And I mean, you know, if you look the, the rules in the thing, it's like 99% redacted text. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, yeah it, it's great. I, uh, I do genuinely like baseball. Uh, it is very silly. And the people on the internet, let me tell you, wow, are they passionate about baseball somehow? More than us. And that's, that's a lot. They're, there are a lot of people drawing art and making songs and coming up with all kinds of stuff for this text-based baseball game. <laughs> wow. Uh, Andrew, there's a blag, a blagging ball. What? The baseball commissioner found the five blood blagging ball. Okay. It looks like a dragon ball, but it has blood symbols instead. Nice. I don't know what this means. <laughs> Again, it probably means nothing. But it also means everything. It means everything. What if there's a dragon ball, blood dragon ball, that you can wish on somehow, and now... How do I find it? Blaze ball. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, people should play Blaze ball. It's fun. It's free. You just sign up. You literally can't pay for anything. You just watch it happen. It's good. If you want to watch this podcast happen, though... Where could you do that, Michael? Uh, you could check us out on our website, weweregamers.com. Um, you can shoot us an email at podcast at weweregamers.com. We always love hearing from people. Um, you could actually watch us on uh, YouTube. We have a We Were Gamers channel where you should uh, subscribe and like some of the videos, including uh, our sub pods of subspace transmission for the Trekkies out there and uh, carbon scoring. Oh, and aside, I forgot to post the photos from both of those pods, so they'll go up this week by the time you hear this. Great. Oh, yeah, I was wanting to see some of those toys that you were talking about. I know, about. and I, it was one of those things that just did not get done before I left. I got the pods all set to go, and then I was like, ah, oh, dang it, I don't have time. So I'll pull those over this week. Uh, and you can follow us on social media, uh, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. We were gamers on all those places. Andrew, the baseball, the baseball commissioner said the front office will be releasing official baseball merch, sanctioned cards, apparel, prints, and more soon. Oh my gosh. 
you could have a Hades Tiger merch. I'm just saying. I might wear a Hades Tiger hat or a shirt. No, never look back. Never, ever look back. So, I just thank you, Internet, for bringing this to me on this, the day that I needed that. Right, so for first things first, we say hello to each other. And then, do you ever see the movie Jeremiah Johnson? No. I don't even know what that is. Yeah. It's a Robert Redford movie where he basically decides to go live in the woods. I think about halfway through the movie, he just stops speaking. That's where that gif of Robert Redford where he just nods comes from. I don't know if I've even seen that gif. I think I have, but somehow in my head, every Robert Redford movie is just him going to live by himself off in the woods. Oh, I just put in the wrong one. I put in subspace. Oops. Hold on. Put in the right one. I mean, you didn't put it in subspace either, so. I just deleted it. There we go. Ah. Oh, this. I don't know that I identify this as Robert Redford. That's I, think that's I don't, the real I issue. don't either. That's, yeah, that's Robert the, Redford that's the problem. And Jeremiah Johnson. Uh huh. Oh, okay. Okay. A movie where he goes to live in the woods and stops speaking about halfway through. He has a wife and a kid. It's weird. It's surely, it's surely a film. Film. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Anyway, I feel like him.